Okay, we're recording. Hey, everybody, welcome. And Gabby, um, I think you're going to take it away for us for our call tonight to introduce our amazing trainer tonight. Yes, so we all know the fabulous Yin. Um, <laughs> I am so, so excited for this training tonight because, y'all, Yin has been killing it when it comes to sponsoring. Yeah. Like, Every day, I feel like I'm getting a text from me that's like, another person just became a consultant and got their 30 day. And I'm like, oh. Um, so not only is her sponsoring through the roof, but she has already hit her, she hit her district bonus, like, I think five days into the month or something crazy. Um, I mean, that's, that's like been the norm for her the past six months. So I just want to um, toss it over to her. She is not only, you know, going, leveling up, earning the AIT trip, but going nation in 2020. I can feel it. So um, I'm going to toss it over to Yen to share her deepest, darkest secrets all about how she is sponsoring like mad woman. Hey, I feel like I'm not even talking to my own team. I feel like I'm like talking to people I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> like a guest trainer for like another team. But anyways, um, I'm so excited to be talking to you guys. And I love, honestly, I was nervous. I love how intimate it is um, with you guys. And I feel like that says a lot, of course, we're like, where you want your business to be like by the end of the year we still have like a lot of days left yeah I couldn't count I couldn't count but we have like a lot of time left in the month and there's still so much time to be doing something and I think even like Ivy being in the corner at a Christmas party like Gabby knows when I was running my business full time I used to be in like the new mother's room and like would lock the door and it was like kind of like a guest company policy to be in there if you were not a new mother, but like that room was never used. So I would like go in, do calls, like all this stuff. So it definitely says a lot. Um, I remember like this time last year, I was, um, I believe I was like trying to promote to district. I think I promoted in the middle of January. So like for a February 1st promotion, but, um, and it's so crazy now being an area manager, so I was like still a consultant. So basically went up to two promotions um, and going to earn the trip to Bahamas and take my mom, going to be a nation at the end of next year and all this good stuff. So um, yeah, like Gabby said, I'm just going to chat a little bit about sponsoring and what I've been doing. I feel like ever since I've kind of implemented certain things, um, I've seen a really awesome success rate. Um, so let me share my screen. Um, and I just, I called it talk your way to VP, um, which is what we're all going to be doing. So, um, and what I, I want to, sorry, backtrack when I mean like a really awesome success rate, I don't have exact numbers for you. I was really trying to get exact numbers, but I couldn't. Um, but I want to, I, the reason I want to say like on a hundred percent success rate is because I always get an answer. So this doesn't mean that like everyone that I have done this with has be, you know, join my team and is like in DM qual and like, you know, go in a region in three months. No, I mean that like I implement these things, I get a response so that I can continue having a conversation with them. And that's really how I define it being successful because not everyone is going to be, you know, an, an awesome, you know, Debbie Neal person, you know, not everyone is going to right away order the 30 days and love it and connect you with other people, right? Some people, you know, what, whatever. But my, what I feel like my goal is, is, and I'll get into this a little bit too. Um, what my goal is, is to figure out just what three bins are they in, right? Like what three categories are they in? Do they want to host for you? Are they just a client or PC? Um, or do they want to be a business builder? And these conversations, like, this can take anywhere from like right then and there to like maybe a year, maybe three years, maybe five. You really don't know. And that's what's, I think that's what people mean when they say attach yourself to the activity and not the outcome, right? Because you never know when you're going to get that actual outcome in terms of like ordering a, you know, a bunch of product or, um, you know, being a business builder or even like getting in front of people. Some people are going to be like that flat out no, but your job is to collaborate with them. Everything we do in Arbonne is people-based. It's You have to have that collaboration and that connection with them in order to figure out what three areas, which are the one, three areas they're going to be in. And that's it. Like, do not overcomplicate this because we, you know, we think a lot about Arbonne and that turns into us thinking that we're running our business. And then we get disappointed when we see numbers, which 
regardless of what number you're at, it's a lie. You can change it like just by talking to people. Um, and we always say activity is, you know, the best medicine for whatever issue you have. Um, but do not overcomplicate it and just attach yourself to that activity and fall in love with just sharing the Arbonne business and sharing your own story. So getting in front of people, this is what the first thing, right? Um, and I keep looking down because I have my notes here, but um, do not work yourself up over verbiage. Everyone thinks that like you have to have the exact right, perfect, like a number of characters or like the exact right recipe and like a certain thing to say to people to have these awesome um, answers and to get everyone to say yes to you. That is not true. I keep it so, so simple. And I put things in here, like most of these people had, um, um, had a hesitation before I even got in front of them. Right. But it's, remember, this is not a big deal. <laughs> like all we're doing is just like sharing our bond. That's all we want to do is just talk to them. So this is like, Hey, I met this girl. The first picture I thought it was important because, um, all this girl did was tell me I smelled good. I swear to you. I, she was at the register at a coffee shop. <laughs> she was the, the cashier and she was like, Oh my God, you smell so good. And I was like, Thank you so much. It was actually kind of expensive. So I'm glad you can smell me like, I, you know, whatever. It's my first time at that shop. I was like, what is your, this is my first time here. I've never heard this place before. I'm meeting my friend for coffee right now. And I was actually there doing a one-on-one. -on -one. And, um, you know, I was like, what do you recommend? Yada, yada. I was like, well, I love your shirt. And I was like, you know what? Are you like, do you live around here? Are you from here? You are so nice. You, you know, do you just, do you have an Instagram? Um, I did not say one freaking word about Arbonne. I literally, the words never even came out of my mouth. One, because I, I was holding up a line and two, because I don't really know this girl. Like we, we don't have to say Arbonne right there. We just have to make that connection. Um, so this was just like, and I, this is really bad too, but I do not remember this girl's name and her Instagram is, she has zero pictures. Like nothing. So I was like, Oh my God, I don't remember this girl's name, but I just have to get in front of her. And it was so simple as being like, you know, you were seriously so sweet and made me feel so welcome at the coffee shop. Like, I'm not sure if you've seen my posts or at all interested in what I do, but I love working with people who have your personality. So I'd love to share it with you. I don't know this girl from Adam, but she's was sweet, you know, like I just love, of course you want to work with people who are inviting and welcoming like that. Like it does not have to be like, I feel like you have the best pictures or this could really be something for you. You know, you want to have an, a, a reason of course. Um, but even something just being like, I love working with people who have your personality. Boom, done. Okay, great. Um, you know, this, I just don't think I can fit it in my schedule totally fine. Oh my God. Finals. I didn't include the entire conversation, but at least I'm getting to know her a little bit. Like she's in school. Okay. That's good to know. When's your last final? The, the I'm meeting with her tomorrow. Actually. Um, it was like, when's your last final? Great. Let's meet after that. Yada, yada. She's coming over for a smoothie tomorrow. Um, this person, the person in the middle actually is a, is a girl on my team. Um, and she's in DM qual right now. She's she's incredible. Um, and she was a, a no, she was like, I decided I'm, I'm not going to do it. Great. Let's just talk anyway. I don't care if you decided to do it or not. We're just, you still haven't actually heard what I, you know, she's, she hopped on a virtual healthy happy hour, but I was like, you know, I just want to pick your brain because I know you're going to know some awesome people. Right. I said, I know, you know, some dope go-getters like you, who this could be a fit for would love to give you the full picture and pick your brain a bit. No big deal. The other girl, whatever, she was moving. Her life is crazy. We met. We did a one-on-one. -on -one. She's. I was like, and I, you can be honest too. Like, wait, I can't see part of my presentation because of your guys' faces. I'm gonna minimize you. Um, but what was I gonna say? Oh, you can be honest. Like, I've been dreaming to have a team in Australia. She's from Australia. She lives in LA. If you could, you know, it would mean the world to me if I could give you the real lowdown on what I do and get some of your feedback. I know you know some dynamic go-getters who could be a fit for. Are you free Sunday night? Whatever we met, you know, last week. Um, how do I move this thing? Okay, there we go. So you got in front of them, right? What now? And how do I, I want to be able to see you guys, but I also want to be able to see my presentation. Okay, there we go. Um, this is not about you, right? We've heard this so many times, but it really isn't. Like this, Arbonne has nothing to do with you, right? Of course, your goals, your dreams, they're so important. We know that sponsoring is going to help you get there. But the only way to sponsor people is to show them how Arbonne can be a fit for them. So 
This is like, you're meeting with them. How have you been? What do you do? What do your days look like? Are you liking that? Is that what you want to do long-term or something else? And this is how I'm connecting with them, right? Like, gosh, I didn't like my job either. You know, I'm so happy I had Arbon to fall back on because I did, I started to wake up and dreaded going to work every single day. Like, that's why I started my Arbon business. And it's so funny you said that. And that makes me so much more excited to share this business with you, right? Boom. So we can segue into a conversation. We're so um, caught up on like, how am I going to bring up Arbon? I promise you, it's there's going to be a natural place in the conversation where you can bring it up. Sometimes there's even a lull in the conversation. You can be like, well, you know, I don't want to keep you long any longer. I'm sure you have a busy day. Um, and I'm so glad that you made time for me. Let me just, you know, quickly share with you what it's about. And, you know, I won't take up any more of your time or something like that. Um, and, it, you know, boom. Okay. The one pager. Do you have the one pager printed? If you don't, shame on you. Go print it. I know we hear like a lot of stories of VPs being like, do you print it? Do you have to have, you know, they have it laminated. I don't think you need any of that hoopla. Just have it printed out. I don't even know where mine is because it goes from bag to bag, but I find it. It's like folded up. You know, it's so easy. And the reason that I do this, I'm like, I don't want to laminate it and all that stuff. One, I don't have a laminator. Two, no one's got time for that. Three, I want to be duplicatable, right? Not everyone is going to be, want to laminate their things. If I have a business builder who does, okay, hat off to you, honey. But I want to show the person I'm talking to how easy it is for me to just whip this out my bag and show you what Arbonne's about. And you want to weave your own story in with Arbonne. So even though you have this in front of you, excuse me, this is a tool. All right, this is not your everything. This is just one little tool you have to keep you on track and to make sure that you are not, you know, blabbing on and on and on and like doing that Arbon vomit thing because that's not, again, this is not what that is. So I included little things in here that I usually say to incorporate Arbon into my story. So, you know, and these are just little pictures. So, you know, one of the main reasons I dove into the business was because I knew if I kept doing what I was doing, I wasn't going to have the life that I wanted, right? My full-time job, I got to the point where I was waking up, dreading my day before it even started. Maybe I'd get a promotion and a small pay raise, but what I really, you know, five years, whatever. Um, but what I really want want is to use this time in life to explore everything that it has to offer, right? So usually I'm talking to people my age who are also complaining about their job, waking up and like hating it. They don't know what they want to do. This generation is really unique in that we realize that you don't have to have a, a job, right? There's so much more to life. People want to be more fulfilled than just waking up and going to work every single day. And they also want to have nice things. Okay, so <laughs> we, if we get that out the way, right? We all know we kind of want the same thing here. I'm just saying like, I was just like you. I hated my job, you know? Or like, I didn't necessarily hate it, but like I was waking up and not feeling the passion that I wanted to feel that was going to pull me out of bed every single day, right? It started to get hard. So this is why Arbon was awesome. Um, you know, if you're going through the one pager, our ingredient policy is the same for all 400 of our products. Um, you know, I was still showering before Arbon. you know, I was still using all the things I use, but now I just shop for my own store and share it with other people. It is like so awesome because I was doing that anyways. Now I just get paid every time someone, you know, buys from me. And Arbon is best described as vegan Amazon. All we do is share with people what, you know, share with people what I use, how to get them so they can be healthier, make some more money. Like people are already shopping online. For God's sakes, they're like clicking and ordering their groceries. How ridiculous is that? You know, I barely have to do any work because people are already online shopping. So this is just showing them how to get what they already use from my Arbon store. Okay. We're talking about the compensation. I have to pinch myself every time I tell someone what's possible with Arbon. I can't believe I even have access to this. And like in all of the countries that I mentioned earlier too, it's crazy that I can have a global business from my phone. And listen, I know you're probably not like me. Like I want to build a multi-million dollar business, but maybe that's not your jam, right? Maybe we would just start chipping away at those student loans you were talking about earlier. Like that would be so awesome if I could show you how to do that. I want you to not have to worry about that. Um, and it'll fit in the nooks and crannies of your full-time job. I built this business where I am while I was working full-time. So I know it's possible. Um, and it can work for you in whatever way you need it to. So this is not me being like a district manager. We make 200 to thousand dollars a month. Then there's area manager and we make a thousand, 1500 to four. Like no one cares. <laughs> you just want to tell them like they can see the numbers for themselves. This is how we do it, right? Like 
oh my God. Like, of course, oh, yes, people have seen me do the one pager, or even like a virtual one-on-one where I do like list out the things. But within that, you want to be like, this is what's possible. And I know I'm kind of like shrambling on as I go through this, but this is kind of how I weave in my own story and why I love Arbon into the Arbon story. Um, active listening. Sorry, my, okay. Oh, sorry. Going back to the one pager. I know like for a second, it really did take me a while to be like, I don't want to just like whip out this piece, like this, you know, kind of janky piece of paper and like, what are they going to think? Whatever. But remember like we, you do this on, a, even if you don't do this on a daily basis, you need to act like you do this on a daily basis. This is business as usual. You're a network marketing professional. You're an Arbon professional. You do this every single day, right? So it's no big deal to you. You don't want them to be like, Oh my God. But like, if you act like a big deal, they're going to think it's weird. So if you're just like, oh, oh, I'm just have this thing out, you know what I mean? And let me just show you, that's just what we do. Um, so if you um, are acting like this is just another day for you, then great. It's going to go smoothly because they don't know any better either. Um, active listening. I have learned recently that there is a big, I used to think of myself actually as like a really good listener and a really good advice giver, which I, I still do for my friends, you know, but Recently, I've had someone who um, has told me that I'm not a good listener. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, I am one of the best listeners ever. I always help my friends with their issues, whatever. So I'm like, what is this person talking about? And I actually have really had to work on my active listening. And it has made such a difference in my business. And in my head, I'm like, dang, have I really not been listening this whole time? So <laughs> it's like, one, wait, which I've heard this on a call before and people are like, why am I talking, right? We often want to like hear other people's stories and maybe interject with our own and connect with them, which is great. But I promise like there's going to be something in there that whatever they're saying to you, you're going to be able to um, connect it with Arbon and, and show them how, like why this would be a fit or how you can do that. Right. And, um, like I said earlier, we're so busy thinking about like, oh God, I did the one pager. How am I now going to ask her to, you know, do one of the three things, host, client, or, or business? Like, what is that? And often you're going to, you're going to miss something that they want you to hear. People are not going to sit down with you and tell you things that they're not comfortable telling you, right? So they're always going to say something because they want you to hear it, which duh, but <laughs> it's like, we, they want you to know these things because in the back of their mind, they're very possibly like, man, this maybe could be an answer to that student loan, that pesky student loan, or, you know, that's, there's a really big gift I want to give my mom for her birthday coming up. You know, maybe this can help me. Something that's really, really small. Some people are not thinking big scale, like, uh, you know, multi-million dollar business. I think that a lot of people get into the business and then they see, how big it can really be. But when they're first starting, they're not thinking a million dollars. They're thinking 200 to 500 because that one bill that they're trying to pay, that student loan X, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it is. So um, what was I going to say? So don't focus on how you're going to get them, right? Because most likely they're going to give you something to get them with. I don't even like using that word, but I don't know what else to say. Um, so again, think like, just keep your ears open. And um, you know, once you do that, you can use this scale, which this scale has really worked in terms of what we just already established our job to be, which is putting them in one of the three buckets. So um, after I did the presentation, or I did my one pager. Oh, have you ever considered doing something like this? Or, you know, you said that student loan thing. And as I was talking, I was like, dang, this could, maybe this could really help you pay that student loan. Have you ever considered doing something like this? Yes, no, whatever. Okay, well, you know what, on a scale of one to five, one being never talk to me about Arbonne again, or I'm going to, you know, throw up or punch you in the throat and they'll laugh and they'll like, you know, lighten up the mood. Um, and five being, I'm ready to jump in and build this business. Where do you see yourself? And this is what's going to help you determine which bucket they're going to be in. Um, not everything's going to happen right on the spot, even though I would really like it to, and we'll get into that later, but sometimes it's just, this is all just about getting to the next step. Um, so they're like, I'm a one. That's totally fine. I understand if it's not for you, you know, what's holding you back. Or sometimes you can tell a lot from body language, like, okay, I'm not really going to get that much out of this girl, but you still want to get something. So you're like, totally understand if it's not for you. You know what, after giving you this information, I feel like maybe you have some people who this could be a fit for, 
do you mind maybe if we gather just like three or four friends, I can bring some product over, let you try something for free. If you, you know, haven't already given them something or whatever. Um, and you know, something like that, because if you're like, I'll just network through her. If they see, you know, you in action at a, at a group event, maybe they'll, you know, jump in or whatever. I'm a two. If someone said this earlier, like I'm a two, I, you know, I could see myself later, but I don't know. Cause I haven't tried anything, whatever. That's great. Sounds like you're a bit curious and need a little bit more information. Do you have a question I can help answer? And this is gonna You want to you, the goal after this scale thing is to get hesitations, right? I want people to tell me what's holding them back so that I can answer it for them right then and there. I don't want to be like, Oh, okay. Well, thanks for meeting. See you later. And then they go and they, you know, Google Arbon and come up with their own crazy ideas. And then you lost them forever. You know what I mean? So you want to answer their hesitations right then and there. Okay. And you can, you guys can read the rest, but three awesome. Um, I usually in my head, I'm like, if there are one, um, they're like, you know, maybe a host route or something like that. If there are three, I'm like, okay, they want some product. Um, maybe we need to chat a little bit more. Obviously a five is like, let's sign them up right now before something goes awry again, before they go home and start Googling like conspiracy theories. And you're like, what the hell? So, um, you also, also always want to be asking them a question. So all these things kind of end with the question, right? If you're there for what's keeping you from being a five, um, and five is like definite. So there's usually one thing, again, a hesitation that you can help address um, and, and whatever. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. Oh, sorry. This is important. So people don't remember what you say. They remember how you made them feel, which we hear this a lot, right? So by answering their hesitations, you want to make them feel heard. You want to make them feel important and you want to pull things that they told you earlier. I do a lot of regurgitating, which is like, so I remember you saying that X, Y, and Z and this is how I think it can help you, right? It sounds like you're a bit curious. Like you want to repeat back to them what they have been saying to you the whole time you have been together, which is why active listening is so important. Again, they're not going to tell you something that they don't want you to hear. Um, okay. And then there is always a next step. So what am I doing now? Right? We always talk about a funnel. There is honestly very rarely when something will just be like dead because they like, maybe they don't answer you. But even then, that's like not even like a dead thing to me. I'm like, okay, I'll talk to you, you know, in a couple weeks or whatever. Whether you like it or not, you haven't blocked me. So I'm like, I keep talking. Um, so you're like, what do I do now? When I go on a coffee date, I always bring some kind of sample. And I'm using this as an excuse to reconnect with them again. So maybe that's a little fit kit. Maybe I put like, just recently, I gave my boxing instructor, who I'm dying to have on my team, but we haven't met yet. I put like protein powder in a little baggie, detox tea, a fizzy. I printed off the, um, there's a sheet on success and Plissy Nations that's like, I've, I don't even have any more left, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like the, you check off on the back what you gave them and it has a little information about it. Okay. Um, or like an RE9 sample thing or some kind of skincare thing, right? So um, if they're like one of those things or say they're like a one or whatever, no problem. You know what? I brought you a goodie because I'm just so thankful that I got down to sit with you and share this with you. Why don't you try it? Um, and you know, I'm looking for people who are X, Y, and Z, right? Be specific about who you need. And you're like, why don't you try this? I'll loop back with you. And you know, I don't know, two, 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 let's say like Friday, I'll loop back with you Friday afternoon. You think of people who this could be a fit for and let me know what you think about and I'll loop back with you then to hear your thoughts or whatever. You always want to have something to, you know, connect with them because again, there's always going to be a next step. Getting something on the calendar right there, helping them order or register right there. Like you want to have your phone or computer with you. I always bring my phone or computer. Um, send them a video of a VP who maybe was in the same place as them and had similar hesitation. That might take a little bit of digging, um, but you'll, you'll find something. If not, obviously ask your upline or something like that. Um, and again, who do they know that has a, oh, sorry. Who do they know that has business builder qualities you're looking for and be specific. I used to ask people, well, who do you know that this could be a fit for? Well, now I'm like, well, who do you know who's looking to make a change with their health? Who do you know that is, you know, super dynamic and a go-getter and like want some extra money, right? Like you want to be really specific and you also want to let them know what their 
about to miss out on. Who do you know that maybe could use a vacation next October? Who do you, like, I want to go to the Bahamas with a bunch of people. Do you know anyone who, like, loves the Bahamas or loves the beach or something like that? And they're like, oh, well, I love the beach. Well, of course you do. You know, well, I can show you how to get there. Okay. So <laughs> the last one is, um, I don't think this is the last one, actually, but failing forward. So I put fail in quotes because I really don't think you fail. At, anyone fails at Arbon. I think people just quit. And there's a, a little bit of a difference. I still don't think that's like failing because eventually like people come back around. But, um, you know, you, you can't really fail if you're continuing to work your business. So the best copycat wins, meaning do what the VPs are doing, right? You want to act as if until you are. So act as if you are VP until you actually are one. Every time I get in my car, I'm like, I love my Mercedes. I love this car, the leather seats. I'm riding around. I'm literally visualizing myself driving a Mercedes and everyone's looking at me because I look so cute in it, right? So you want to like, keep on doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. And this is not to say to copy your um, upline because I don't think you need an upline, you need a downline. And we hear that so much, right? But you just wanna be copying the things that you know to be successful. And you, those are things that you can just find on the source. You know what I mean? Like someone in freaking I don't know, Alaska could not know anyone and search Arbon, become a consultant. And like, they could still be able to build their business without talking to one single Arbon consultant because everything we have, Hello, the internet is free, YouTube, anything, and Google anything that can help you. Um, never stop working your personal business. So have you reached your brick? I actually went and looked back. There are maybe three times um, where I, I had personally not reached, reached, my, my, uh, reached my brick, and this is a $2,500 building block that um, you, know, you need to be doing yourself and you need to be teaching other people to do too because if you can't do that, it's going to be very tough <laughs> to, you know, go to your own team and to have a sustainable business. Um, and that's not to say that like, you're not a fail. It does. It's nothing on you. If not every single person on your team is reaching that 2,500 brick, that's okay. Like, but as long as you are showing them how to, you can bring a horse to water. You can't make a drink. I say that a lot, but just show them how to. And if they use information, it's their prerogative. Um, practice makes perfect. So don't think you need to have the perfect thing ready at this one-on-one -on -one or, you know, a virtual or a FaceTime or whatever. Sometimes when I'm FaceTiming people, I don't even have the one pager, but I'm taking them through the one pager over the phone. They just can't see it. Right. Like I'm still incorporating my Arbon story with their, um, with my story. So it doesn't have to be the picture perfect cookie cutter one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it just, you just have to get the information out there Four, having a clear conscience. So what I mean by that is you are sharing Arbon for their benefit, right? Like do not look at people as just QV or just a number because it's going to come back and bite you in the ass because that person is probably going to fall off or, you know, I don't know, they're going to order and never talk to you again. Like it's going to be something weird is going to happen. And if they say no, after you've done everything right, that brings me to number five, you've heard no before. So it's not a big deal. You know, you've probably heard no on worse things before that you want to happen, probably just as bad as you want to be a VP, right? But like, you're still alive today, you're still keeping on going. So obviously, no, is not like a killer word. But you have that clear conscience. You're like, well, I shared this because I saw something in her. I saw that she had a need for this. I saw that she wanted to get healthy. She blatantly posted that she's broke. So I shared this with her, right? So again, that's the bringing the horse to water and, and you know, you can bring a horse to water, you can't make a drink. You just want to have that clear conscience. Like, look, I shared everything I possibly could with you. Everything after that is none of really not much of your business. Um, six, attaching yourself to the activity, which I've said before. Um, and this brings me to the numbers that I heard earlier on a training call that was as of December 1st, so this month, December, 973 district managers. We had 198 area managers, 44 regional vice presidents, and nine national vice presidents. First of all, <laughs> yeah, and you're saying from December 1st to now, this has happened, correct? No, no, no. As of December 1st, these are the promotions that happen. Right. Um, you know what I mean? For, for this month. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just People make it have sure. promoted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So I'm like, I'm already blown away by the amount of people that have dropped 
from district manager to area manager. A lot of people like do not even make it to area. They don't do that like final push. And that's, I, in my opinion, I think that's is mainly because they are attaching themselves to their outcome, right? Like they've heard no, maybe one too many times, or maybe they just heard one no. And they're like, oh, okay, that's it, whatever. But I think the big difference between getting to, and obviously that number keeps getting significantly smaller as you get to the top level of company. And they always say no one has heard more no's than a national vice president. The only difference is that no led them, kept taking them to their yes, their, you know, these bunch of yeses that made them an MVP. So why, you know, why would you let one little no or one small outcome that you perceive to be bad distract you from everything that you do have to lose if you don't continue building this business. So that brings me to my next point, which is what do you actually have to lose? And I think it's like, some people are like, oh my gosh, if I don't build this, you know, that's okay because X, Y, and Z. I don't know what your 21 reasons why are. I really don't know why some of you are building this. If If you're listening to this recording, I don't know why you're building an arm on business. Only you know why. And that is exactly what you have to lose, right? So eliminate that back door. Um, you know, you know your own 21 reasons. In While you are earning this trip to the Bahamas, you can promote one, two, maybe even three levels, right? Um, and you can miss out on that all-exclusive trip to the Bahamas. That Tiffany necklace, courtesy of Polly. Dang, you know what I mean? Like, holy moly, that's, it was so cute. Like, you know, I'm, whatever. Um, a six figure income, however long it takes you to make that. And be, by becoming an MVP, you get a yearly all inclusive trip to Maui every single year. Imagine if every single year for the rest of my life, I go to, Ma- I go to Hawaii once a year, all expenses paid that if, if Arbon offered nothing at all, and this was it, I would do it anyway. Because hello, you know what I mean? That's an amazing trip. So there are things for you to lose by not having your Arbonne business. And maybe you don't care about the trips. You don't care about the necklace. You don't care about the money, whatever. What are your other 21 reasons why, right? Um, and a lot of what helps me in, when my mindset is kind of off sometimes and when I'm like, I don't know if I want to reach out to this person, I always say their name with MVP in front of it. So like, say I didn't know Gabby and I, you know, was scared to talk to her, want to talk to her. In my head, I'm like, I literally visualize people walking across the stage. Obviously, they don't even know that this is possible yet, but I literally picture of them walking across the stage and I hear in my head their name being called and me looking down on the stage and being like, wow, imagine if I didn't, um, you know, reach out to her X amount of months or years ago, she wouldn't be this million dollar leg in my business. You know, like that thought scares me and it scares me for them. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, they don't even know what's possible. And I'm about to open that door for them. So do this for other people. I continue to build the R- my R1 business for people I haven't even met yet. There is someone out there who is my next nation and I probably don't even know them. And they're out there, you know, holding my next a million dollars. So like, you know, for the, for the a hundred no's that I may get, that one yes is all worth it because you don't know how much money that's going to bring into their business and how much it's going to do for them and whatever their own 21 reasons why would be. So just think about that and uh, questions. Um, right, can I just say mom. like, you're going to be training on stage <laughs> any day now. That was so good. Oh my Thanks. God. You killed it, Yen. You killed it. I hope it was helpful. So super helpful. Um, One thing I would ask you is about how many people do you think you reach out to a month and and how many conversations do you think you have? Like just like a a guess. Yeah. um, I know for November and December, it's been 40. As I've written, I've had 40 new conversations. Um, in the past, I haven't been as consistent as I'd liked with it, but I feel like I can confidently say it's always been between 30 and 40 actual conversations about Arbon. So that's not reach outs. Yeah. I don't, 
it's I will be so honest I am not a good tracker I cannot really tell you a lot though I bet it's a lot it is a lot and I really wish I had like a concrete number for you guys and I was trying to get it and I was I had like my lists are everywhere I like pull things on my butt sometimes it's like (laughs) so I was just like I talk to a lot I reach out to a lot of people however the amount of people I talk to is probably 30 to 40 people about right yeah. And that's like sharing the, the one pager. Yeah. Having, yeah. That's sharing the one pager. Um, in, yeah. In some, in some kind of way. Yeah. Uh, or maybe not even the one pager, like Gabby and I have our weekly virtual healthy happy hour. That's not a one pager, but like, right. But you know, it's a full on presentation. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think first off, I agree with Gabby that that was incredible. What a great training. You really knock it out of the park with that. That was so good. Um, really helpful. I love seeing your, the, I loved your, um, the text and then just seeing that someone, you know, I think a lot of times that's what happens is we, we get that initial no and we're just shut down. So I think that was super, um, super helpful. Yes. Thank you. That was so good. Um, so I know there's going to be a ton of people watching this. And so you guys, you're going to really get a lot of value from, from all of this. Um, so I love, love, love that. And I know we need to kind of wrap it up, but just, no, I'm sorry. I talked for so long. I no, should have my, um, don't be sorry. Timer. It was so good. Do y'all have any questions? Anybody, um, Amber or Ivy or Crystal or Carrie? You said something during fail forward and now I can't freaking think of the verbiage. Like I'm looking through my notes and I couldn't write it down because you said it so fast. Oh and shoot. So- what did I say? I don't know. It was on, it's not on the slide. You just said it at the very beginning. Um, Maybe it'll come to me. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I literally just like say things. This is recorded. Oh yeah. 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 No, recorded. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll oh, upload hi. this to Facebook and you can re-listen because I think there are so many nuggets in this that, wow. I mean, no kidding. And you just, I, I agree with Gabby. That was so good. Aww. I do want to share before we hop off because I know everybody has Christmas stuff to do, but um, I do want to share that y'all, you can start adding even people that you're talking to about Arbon that aren't necessarily a client yet into the healthy inside and out group. We are going to start something on the 26th. Gabby and Andrea and I did a little recording today, um, but we're going to be starting. Oh, Thank you, Ivy. Oh my gosh. And so good that you jumped on from your party. That's amazing. Um, but we're going to start on the 26th, having someone every day share their, um, 30 day experience. So their personal sort of stories. And so we want you to start adding people to help the inside and out because basically it'll be like exposure, 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 exposure to get them to that point of, yes, I'm going to do that 30 day with you. So this is y'all in my experience, the week between Christmas and New Year's is one of the busiest biggest weeks in our business. So expect that if you start planting a ton of seeds now, you're going to be reaping a ton of seeds that week uh, or a ton of whatever they make, (laughs) whatever seeds make plants. Oh yeah. We're in the plant business, plant based. Um, (laughs) but (laughs) don't laugh at me y'all. I worked with plants today. Um, but listen y'all, um, just definitely be talking to people about that 30 day and plugging them into that group because we've got a lot in store for y'all. And we're going to go throughout the whole month of January, every single day with somebody sharing their takeaways from the 30 day. So it's going to be really good. I'm so grateful that y'all took the time out. And, and yeah, I know everybody, I've already had people texting me saying, were you recording? Were you recording? Um, so yes. Yay. And that was just, I mean, I can't thank you enough. What an amazing job. I don't know how long it took you, but wow, that was so good. Gabby, I'm so glad. It was that so was good. Like, I got Ashley so much Strong. out of that. Really, I got so much out of that. That was amazing. That was like Ashley Strong at GTC, like mind blowing. So. Aw, thanks, also, Amber. My, my paper also looks like a redheaded stepchild. So yes. like, it's rough. Yeah, no, as long as you have it and it's not like all ripped up, you're good. <laughs> all right y'all well gabby any closing thoughts or anybody else just as yen was saying like when she pictures people on stage as mvp is like oh my gosh if i had not and what the funny thing i was thinking about this was when i came to swanee that one time yen it was like super inconvenient like 
I was kind of annoyed that I like made that trip because I didn't think anything happened from it because I had like zero orders and I was like, I trekked all this way and like nothing happened, but fortune is in the follow-up because I followed up with Yin and we had a couple of conversations and then I didn't hear from her for a while. And then I got a random FaceTime call at midnight one night to sign her up. So you just never know <laughs> what's going to happen from the activity. And I, I remember the, um, the, the internet was so bad at Swanee, right? Because I remember we had some calls too when you were there. Yeah, it was so, so bad. So bad. Mm-hmm. But you know, yeah, that's the thing you guys about this business is so fun to me. It's like this it's like a spider web and you never know one, one little seed that you planted, what's going to come out of it. It's incredible. So, um, oh, I loved this so much. You guys, Merry Christmas. It was Merry so good Christmas. to see everybody. Have a great job, Ian. Thank you. Ian. That was so awesome. I'm going to rewatch the recording. And- yes. Yeah, for sure. Let me stop the